Okay, now let's talk about the purpose and scope of the Internet and Engineering Task Force, the IETF. The basic purpose of the IETF is to develop new technologies and to main, maintain existing technologies for the Internet Protocol and Internet Protocol related uh, environments, particularly the Internet, but also those enterprises that run Internet Protocol networks themselves. Primarily the focus is on the Internet. If it's something that is purely enterprise level, the IETF may or may not address that. In doing this, the IETF has to ensure that the technology deals with the Internet as it is and how it changes. The Internet explodes, has exploded in uh, users and in technologies. The graph here shows the Internet user growth over the last uh, couple of decades, up to over 3 billion users today. Uh, overnight, a, a new technology can get hundreds of millions of users, so the technology itself has to be able to scale and it has to be able to be deployed rapidly for, because of, you have failure by success. If you get a, a lot of users overnight, you can crash the system. The uh, technology has to be operated securely because security is a big deal. It has to be able to be managed so that you, when you deploy it, you can actually keep it running. The IETF produces standards and it produces other documents. Well, what's a standard? The IETF produces the kinds of standards that are voluntary, the ones that people can use, organizations can use because they want to, not because anybody tells them they have to. Many years ago, I gave a talk at the International Telecommunications Union, the ITU, when they were first understanding this internet thing was real. And the talk was basically a description of the IETF and how it worked, and sort of like this, this module that we're, we're in right now. The first question I was asked at the end of the talk was, how can you call your things standards if no government mandates their use? Well, that's not the kind of standards we do. The sidebar here talks about what is a mandatory standard. This is from the American National Standards Institute. Uh, and a mandatory standard is something that if you don't do it, you can go to jail. Civil or criminal penalties. Well, we don't do that. We have no protocol police in the IETF. We don't make standards which somebody tells you you have to use. Well, some people do. Uh, it's, we don't stop them from that, but we don't say that you have to use it. We have many documents that we call standards that no one uses. Uh, at the time, it, they thought it seemed to be a good idea, but in reality, it turned out to be we missed the window of opportunity or the technology moved on, and what we call a standard is ne never really used. But we also have things which are very heavily used. They change the way that the internet works and the way that many businesses work. We don't have any formal recognition for IETF standards. Governments haven't approved them. They weren't in the uh, standards approval process. The governments weren't. And they haven't adopted them or anything like that. Some, some of the IETF standards are referenced by governments, but others say that they can't reference them because the IETF is not seen as a legal entity and it's not seen as a standards body that meets the international requirements for standards bodies. What's the scope of the IETF? Well, the old phrase is above the wire and below the application. All those things that make the internet work, routing, secure transport, um, remote control, all those kinds of things, streaming audio, streaming video, that's the kind of things that the IETF works on. But it used to be above the wire and below the application. Well, wires aren't quite as easy to define as they used to be. Right now, the IETF has standards that allow you to run Ethernet on top of Internet protocol. So you can have IP over Ethernet over IP, over MPLS over IP, over Sonnet over IP. So you're going to have a stack that's endlessly deep. That's all software. There's no hardware until you get down to the very bottom layer. And how do you define what the scope is when, you, when the scope includes the wire, which we used to say we had to be above? Well, it's a fuzzy area. And the IETF's scope is constantly changing. It's changing because we're going down to real fake wires and because we're reaching in other areas where other standards bodies have been predominant. For example, IP telephony. Uh, the ITU and Etsy and the like were in the telephony standards business. When, the te when telephones are run over copper wires. And now, because telephones are run over the internet, 
the IETF is in this space, and this has caused tensions between the IETF and other standards bodies. But it's an area where we'll constantly see churn. The IETF's edges will constantly change as more and more of the world runs over Internet protocol.